if you're one of my buddies at the tech, you know, no real point in you watching this video. I'm making this video kind of like for the general public of things about going over alignments. So, yeah, Greg, Chris, Teddy, Gerard, everybody, you know, just give me the thumbs up, but get out of here. So, since we're all sitting here in quarantine and everything, I'm going to give you a good rundown. Cliff over there, taking a nap. Of alignments, pretty much. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on back and forth. Don't look at that. About what is a good alignment. People think they know what they're doing. Everyone wants to talk out the side of their ass about you know what's good and what's bad. But this is just a rundown if you want to know. And if you want to learn more, I got a plenty of other stuff coming along because I think I just have... I could really just talk about this information all day, whether it, whether it comes to alignments, ignition timing, and everything. I'm not an expert. I'm not going to say I'm an expert. I'm not a tuner, but, you know, I kind of know my heat. So, this relates to any car. I am going to be talking in regards more towards the drag racing side of things. Not so much road course, although I will hit a few things here and there, but with alignments, only three things you got to remember. remember camber caster and tow that's with any car i don't care what it is if it's a bugatti or a volkswagen beetle camber if you're looking at it and this is from looking at it from the back of the car you have the actual tilt of the tire so don't ask me why i have a nascar tire but i have one so camber if this is the outer part of it like this is the outside of the car and this is the inner edge of the car. This. You, you can see that if I can grab it. That if you were to have negative camber, it is tilted in. If you have, and then if you have positive, it goes the other way. That's pretty much it. Caster. Caster is something that is not measurable. You won't be able to see it. Well, it is measurable, but you won't see it on a car per se. But it's a little bit more complicated, but for the most part, it's the difference between the position in the upper and lower ball joint. So if this is a tire. You're looking at the car from the side. This is the front. This is the rear. You see the strut is angled this way. Similar to a motorcycle, a motorcycle has very, like a Harley, has an extreme amount of positive caster where you see the handlebars over here and the tires way back over here. Pretty simple. Toe, top view, all four tires here. Toe is actually the difference between the, the most front part of the tire and the most rear part of the tire of where it's tilted in. So, toe, if you have it, if you look at it here, this is the NASCAR tire. Camber, negative positive toe is actually like if this is the right front tire and it's stationary right here toe is the angle that this tire is set at that is from there to there really easy quick rundown on how to remember what is positive or what is negative toe this is the way i look at it it's really easy one of my instructors told me back in the day how i do it and to this day i still go by looking at that toe for example, this is one tire right here. This is another tire right here. All right, I got I'm only one person, so I'm gonna go with this is one tire. Now, if girls are coming towards me, this is a positive thing. If girls are going away from me, this is a negative thing. Right front tire. If girls are coming towards me, positive. If they're going away, negative. Caster. You see it here, measured by the angle. Now, like I said, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's pretty easy. Positive. You go like this. If you are drinking a good beverage or, you know, a good 10% a good IPA, what? Then this is positive. Very positive. Like I said with a motorcycle. Motorcycle is the difference between the upper and lower ball joint. A motorcycle, I mean, the caster is upper and lower ball joint. A motorcycle, handlebars up here, tire way over here. So you see an extreme amount of positive ca caster. If you're drinking it, positive. If you're spilling it, that's negative. Kind of simple. Camber, I mean, not really anything much to go about. I mean, everyone sees the memes of cars going down the street and they got negative 20 degrees of uh, camber right there, so pretty simple. 
But that was a quick rundown on that. Now to get a little bit more complicated, not complicated, but to break down everything a little bit better, I have everything laid out right here. This is not going too far out in advance with everything because you can sit here and talk for about pretty much hours and days about it. But I'm going to give it a quick rundown. Where is the, uh, okay. First of all, to put, when you say you bring your car in to get an alignment or when you do an alignment or if you're doing it yourself, there's only three simple rules you got to follow. So steps. You are going to do camber, caster, and then tow. This is because when you lower a car, when you get your tire, when you lower your car, naturally, by the way the suspension is set up, you have a tendency to tow in. So, if you see a car when it gets lowered the first time, it's not really, sometimes it is measurable and you can look at it and it's drastic, but car's lowered, you get negative camber, and you tow in. That's why you get an alignment, to get your stuff squared away. So that's why when you go and get your alignment, you don't do the tow first and then fix the camber because camber directly affects tow. That's why you always take care of the camber first. Camber cast or tow, really easy. Camber. If it is too negative or too positive, it will cause tire wear and a pull. For example, like here, this is an actual NASCAR tire, and you can see the little dots where they measure everything, and you can see here actually in the center, it's a little bit more worn out in here than it is on the outside. So if you look at a normal everyday street tire, wood that has a little bit of excessive camber wear, you can have two thirty seconds on the inner side and six thirty seconds on the outside, just because you don't have the proper alignment. Some of the stuff that I have experience with, like the, the Michelin Pilot Sport, the Pirelli P0 and the R888, the Pilot Sport will have a, a common tendency to wear on the outer part of the tire a little bit quicker. The P0, it just actually, the P0 after about 100 miles is a piece of granite and it does not work and it's a, just a ho horrible tire for if you want to boogie down. <coughs> oh my god, why do I always, why am I always burping? But the inner edge of the P0, like if this is a P0, but it's not, the inner edge here will actually tend to not wear out as much as the outer side. Whereas the P0, which I've seen, which come on Z06s, they come on M3s, they come on a lot of performance cars, the outer edge will seem to wear out a little bit quicker. R888, I've seen on almost everybody that, I, I haven't ran r on, on any of my personal cars, but... The R888 I've seen wears out dead center. If you have a, a decent alignment, it wears out in the center almost every freaking time. You'll you'll see it goes down to it goes down to the wires on the middle of the tire rather than outside first. And back to what I was talking about negative camber, negative, positive. If you're looking at it from the side view, negative, positive. Caster. If caster is off between both sides. And to bring it into a little bit of perspective, you know, just because something is green or you get an alignment sheet that's green, it does not mean that it is, you can see this is a before alignment. Everything's green, but because everything's green doesn't mean it's the same. So like we said, camber caster toe. Left front camber looks like it could be a little bit more towards the positive side. It's negative one degree 16 minutes I can get into that later this side is actually a little bit more negative than this side so the way camber can cause a pull if you have one tire that's sitting a little bit more negative than the other tire for example like say this tire your right front tire is dead square where it's supposed to be now if we pretend that this is the left front tire and left front right front the left front tire is tilted in and you get negative camber the car will actually pull to the side that has the most negative camber if that makes sense most negative so if we got here if you're looking at camber this is very minute I doubt this will actually cause a pull but if you're looking at it just based off of camber this car because you have more negative camber on this side it'll actually pull to the left caster very within within spec next to each other toe 
this is three minutes off on this side it could possibly cause a uh, offset steering wheel but nothing too too crazy now same thing in the rear rear camber look at this this side is a little bit more, more negative than this side so this car will probably have more of a tendency to pull to the left toe four minutes eight minutes one thing with the alignment you always want to do back to front when you are doing the alignment you don't want to work front to back because then you're going to throw everything off so with toe as i was kind of going back and forth as well we'll, we'll get the to toe but i just wanted to throw the, the graph in there to make it look a little bit more sense so caster you know won't cause a direct tire wear on there per se but it can cause a pull I just talked about how camber can cause a pull so with, with caster if you have one side that's a little bit way more positive than the other what what's gonna happen with a caster you're gonna pull to the side that is less positive so this is how you remember you're drinking a lot on this side your right front you're spilling on your left front negative all right you are going to pull to the side that you're spilling like you're drunk okay drinking you're good spilling negative you're gonna pull to the left oh my god I think I may be drunk because I'm keep burping I think I think every time I make a video I just keep burping so like I said with a, this is a, a motorcycle very positive and with it with it being very positive it is very easy for the car for the steering wheel to return back to center so when you lower a car and you have a car that has adjustable caster you can make a more positive caster so that when you go drag racing and when you go down the track and you're going and you want the car to track straight obviously you want everything to be on point you want all four tires in a most forward position that they can in the most straight ahead position that they can and with caster being real positive you when you're steering and going and trying to keep the car down the track naturally with a more positive caster as you let go of the wheel or you know you don't let go of the wheel at 150 but naturally the wheel returning to center will be a lot easier and it'll actually do it easier for you so that way it's easier for the car to stay on stay going down the middle and you can see here like if you're on a stock height versus when you're lowered it becomes more positive that's a quick rundown on that so, like I said, if you look, this is like the top view of it. Positive, girls are coming to me. Negative, they're going away. When doing the alignment and when you're going on the sheet, you want to go back to front. So you want to square these up, square these up, and then you'll be fine. This is an example right here that I got. Stock, you're at one, one degree, negative 30 minutes of camber, zero degrees, 10 minutes of toe. So, I know this is probably going to be a little bit complicated for some, but I want you to look at the numbers rather than the actual numbers and what they mean in degrees versus minutes. So, negative one degree ish. We're going to call this about maybe like one and a half. So, you're going to look at camber and toe for your stock car. So, ne about negative one and a half, and then actually. Let's do this to clarify everything. We're going to go ahead and put, there we go, negative. And then obviously if there's no negative here, it's positive. But I'm going to just say it just for the sake of things. And then I'm going to put negative and then I'm going to put positive. That way there's no confusion on what's going on. So you got negative about one and a half and then you're at plus 10. Once you lower the car, you see right here, camber goes more negative. You're about negative 150, which is almost two in tow. You're about 19. So that's why every time you do any kind of suspension change, any kind of really any weight savings too, if you take a lot of weight out of the car, you're going to want to make sure that anything you do that changes either of those two, you want to get an alignment checked out. And just because it's in the green, you don't want it. You, you still want to get it uh, checked and adjusted by at least someone that knows what they're doing. So if you want to pay for a $20 alignment and all they're going to do is just go in there and make sure you're steering wheel straight and send you on your way, go for it if that's what you think an alignment is. But if you really want to get an alignment done by someone who knows what they're doing, and especially for what you're going to be doing, you get what you pay for. That's pretty much it. So I got more videos, more stuff to come. If you want to see more of what I got to talk about, certain stuff, 
Let me know in the comments, and uh, we'll get out of here.